Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 47 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to focus on the topic of certs. So we're going to be looking at the different rules whenever we're dealing with certs today, how to multiply them, divide them, even how to simplify them and add them, and also expand in brackets with them. If you've got the Code Maths Revision Cards, card number 75 is the revision card on certs, or one of the revision cards on certs, that'll be a useful one for you. So we're going to be looking at certs today, and I'm going to be going through various rules. There'll be times whenever I get you to pause the video to try some questions yourself, so make sure you try those. And also in the description below, we've got the practice questions, so whenever you get to the end of the video, I highly recommend for topics such as search, which is quite an important one, particularly if you're in for those top grades in your higher GCSE maths, you try those practice questions. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at search, and tomorrow, whenever we're doing tomorrow's video, we're going to come back to search, and we're going to look at a topic called rationalizing the denominator. So if you're watching today's video, and you're thinking, where are the rationalizing the denominator questions? They're coming tomorrow, so don't panic, okay? So today, we're going to be looking at search, we're going to be looking at the different rules involved in search, and so on. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at thirds. So let's start off by looking at some rules whenever we're dealing with thirds. And here's part of the code maths revision card. That if we've got root a multiplied by root b, that's equal to root a b. So for instance, if we had root 6 multiplied by root 5, what would we just do? Well, 6 times 5 is 30, so that would be the square root of 30, or root 30. So root 6 times root 5 would be root 30. And also, that works if you've got numbers in front of them as well. So for instance, if we had 3 root 2 multiplied by 2 root 5, we would do, well, we do 3 times 2 to begin with, and 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And then we would do the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 5, or root 2 times root 5, and that's equal to root 10. So if we had 3 root 2 times 2 root 5, we would do 3 times 2, which is 6, and root 2 times root 5, which is root 10. And that's it. So that's our rule for multiplying thirds. So root A times root B is root AB. Okay, next, if we've got root A multiplied by root A, that's equal to A. So for instance, if we had root 3 times root 3, well, root 3 times root 3 would be root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So root A times root A is equal to A. And then let's have a look at our rule for dividing thirds. If we had root A divided by root B, so if we're dividing thirds, we just divide the numbers, so we'd have the root of A over B. So if we had root 10 divided by root 2, well, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that'll be equal to root 5. And that's it, so you just divide the numbers, so that'd be root 5. And that also works whenever we've got numbers in front of thirds. So if we had 12 root 14 divided by 3 root 2, we would do 12 divided by 3, which is 4, and then we would do root 14 divided by root 2, and root 14 divided by root 2 would be root 7, because 14 divided by 2 is 7, so that would be root 7. So the answer would be 4 root 7. So that's it. So these are rules of thirds. So root a times root b is root ab. A root times itself, so root a times root a would be equal to a. And finally, you can divide thirds. So root a divided by root b would be root a over b. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now for you to try yourself. So here we've got some questions. Feel free to press pause and work out each of these now. Okay, so root 11 times root 3, that would be equal to root 33, just multiplying the numbers together. Okay, next, root 8 times root 8. Well, 8 times 8 is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. Or remember, root a times root a is just a, so that would just be equal to 8. Okay, next, we've got 2 root 5 multiplied by 9 root 3. Well, 2 times 9 is equal to 18, so it'll be equal to 18. And then we've got root 5 times root 3, and 5 times 3 is 15, so it'll be 18 root 15. Okay, next, we've got root 26 divided by root 13. Well, 26 divided by 13 is 2, so it'll be equal to root 2. And finally, 12 root 14 divided by 3 root 2, so it's going to be equal to, well, 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. And then root 14 divided by root 2, well, 14 divided by 2 is 7, so that'll be 4 root 7. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. Okay, so we've looked at multiplying thirds, and we've looked at dividing thirds. Now let's look at simplifying thirds. So if I was asked to simplify the square root of 45, what I would do is I'd look for the largest square number that's a factor of 45, and that would be 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the root 45 up into two thirds that are multiplied together to be 45, but one of them's going to be 9. So it's going to be the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of, now 9 times 5 is 45, so it would be the square root of 5. Now, the square root of 9 is equal to 3, so we've got 3 times root 5, and 3 times root 5 would be 3 root 5. And you can check that in your calculator. If you press the square root of 45 and press equals, you get 3 root 5. Okay, so here's two for you to try, so feel free to press pause and simplify the square root of 72 and the square root of 300. Okay, let's start off with the square root of 72. Well, the largest square number that's a factor of 72 would be 36. So we've got root 36 multiplied by root 2, because 36 times 2 is 72. So that'll be root 36 multiplied by root 2. The square root of 36 is 6, so that'll be 6 root 2. So root 72 is the same as 6 lots of root 2, or 6 root 2. 
Okay, next, the square root of 300. So let's look for the largest square number that's a factor of 300. So that'll be 100. So that'll be the square root of 100 multiplied by the square root of 3, because 3 times 100 would be 300. So the square root of 100 is 10, so we get 10 lots of root 3, or 10 root 3. So root 300 is the same as 10 lots of root 3, or 10 root 3. And that's it. And that's it. So it's very important to be able to simplify thirds as well. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so we've had a look at multiplying thirds and dividing thirds and simplifying thirds, and now let's look at adding thirds. So we've got work out the square root of 18 plus the square root of 8. Now to add thirds, what we need to do is we need to simplify them and then see what we get. So if we had the square root of 18, so that's going to be the square root of 18, let's simplify that. So that would be equal to, well, the largest square number that's a factor of 18 would be 9. So the square root of 18, the square root of 18 would be equal to root 9 multiplied by root 2. Because root 9 times root 2 would be root 18. Now the square root of 9 is 3, so that's equal to 3 root 2. So the square root of 18 is 3 root 2. Next, root 8, well, root 8. If we simplify that, the largest square number that's a factor of 8 would be 4, so that'll be root 4 multiplied by root 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, so that'll be 2 root 2. So the square root of 8 would be 2 root 2. So the square root of 18 is 3 root 2. The square root of 8 is 2 root 2. And then if we add them together, if we've got 3 lots of root 2, and we add 2 lots of root 2, all together that would be 5 lots of root 2. So root 18 plus root 8 would be 5 root 2. And that's it. So to add surge, you just need to simplify them and then add them. And it's the same for subtracting. You just simplify them and then do the subtraction. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got root 75 plus 9 root 12. So the square root of 75 plus 9 lots of root 12. So to do this question, what you need to do is simplify both of these thirds to begin with. So press pause now and simplify both of these thirds and see what you get. Okay, so in terms of root 75, root 75 would be equal to root 25 multiplied by root 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so that'll be 5 root 3. So that means that the square root of 75 is 5 root 3. Now in terms of 9 root 12, if we simplify root 12, let's see what we get. Root 12 will be root 4 multiplied by root 3. The square root of 4 is 2, so it's going to be 2 root 3. So root 12 is 2 root 3. Now this was 9 lots of root 12, so it's going to be 9 lots of 2 root 3. So 9 lots of 2 root 3, well multiplying those together will be 18 lots of root 3. So plus 18 root 3. So if we simplify root 75, we get 5 root 3. If we simplify 9 root 12, we get 18 root 3. Now we just need to add together, and that'll be equal to 23 lots of root 3, or 23 root 3. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've got work out root 98 subtract root 32. So feel free to press pause now and to work this out. Okay, so to this question, you would have simplified root 98. So in root 98, well, the largest square number that's a factor of 98 would be 49. So it's going to be 49, and that'll be multiplied by root 2. So we've got root 49 times root 2 would be root 98. The square root of 49 is 7, so that's 7 root 2. So that means that root 98 would be 7 root 2. Then we've got subtract the square root of 32. So let's simplify root 32 and see what we get. So that's going to be root 16. 16 is the largest square number that's a factor of 32, multiplied by root 2. The square root of 16 is 4, so it's going to be 4 root 2. So subtract 4 root 2. And if we get 7 root 2, take away 4 root 2, that's equal to 3 root 2. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so we've looked at how to multiply thirds and divide thirds and how to simplify them and how to add and subtract thirds. Now let's look at how to answer questions that involve brackets with thirds. So here we've got to expand and simplify 5 subtract root 2 all squared. So to do a question like this, what I would do is I'd write the bracket out twice and then expand and simplify it. So feel free to press pause now to do that. Okay, because it's 5 subtract root 2 squared, that means multiply by itself. So I've written the bracket out twice, so just beside itself, and I'm going to expand and simplify. So 5 times 5 would be equal to 25. 5 multiplied by minus root 2, that'll be minus 5 root 2. Now we've got minus root 2 times 5, well, uh, that's going to be equal to minus 5 root 2 as well. And then finally, we've got minus root 2 times minus root 2, well, negative times a negative is a positive. And then root 2 times root 2, that's just going to be 2, because remember that if you do root a times root a, that's equal to a. Or another way to consider it is if you've got root 2 times root 2, that's root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that'll be plus 2. And now we just need to simplify this. So we've got 25 plus 2, that's going to be 27. And then we've got subtract, and then we've got minus 5 lots of root 2, subtract another 5 lots of root 2, so that's going to be minus 10 lots of root 2. So the answer would be 27, subtract 10 lots of root 2, and that's it. So if you are asked to expand and simplify 5 minus root 2 all squared, the answer would be 27 minus 10 root 2, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. Okay, so this last question, this is one for you to do, so feel free to press pause and to expand and simplify. Root 7 plus 1, close brackets, root 7 subtract 1, close brackets. 
Okay, so to do this question, well, let's expand our brackets. So root 7 times root 7, that'll be root 49, which is 7. And thinking about it, root a times root a is a, so root 7 times root 7 is 7. Then we've got root 7 times minus 1, that's going to be minus root 7. Then we've got 1 times root 7, that's going to be plus root 7. And then finally, 1 times minus 1, well, 1 times minus 1 would be minus 1. Now we've got minus root 7 plus root 7, well, that's going to be 0, so they're going to cancel out. So we're left with 7, take away 1. And 7 take away 1 is 6, so the answer would just be 6. And that's it. So if you got that, well done. And that's actually going to be quite useful in our next video. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at rationalizing the denominator. So this is quite a useful skill, and I'll talk about that tomorrow whenever we're doing rationalizing denominators. And that's it. So in today's video, we went through thirds, the different rules involving thirds, how to multiply thirds together, divide them, how to even simplify thirds and add thirds, even doing questions which might be involving a bit of a context and so on. I highly recommend you have a look at the practice questions today because, as I said, thirds is quite an important topic particularly in those non-calculator papers, but they could also creep into your calculator papers as well. But particularly for those non-calculator papers, I'd highly recommend you have a look at the practice questions. So in the description below, have a look at the practice questions on certs today. So I hope you find this video useful. As I said, there's 47 days to go into your GCC Mavs exam, so keep up the hard work. Tomorrow we're going to be going for rationalizing denominators, so you don't want to miss that one. So 3 o'clock on YouTube, rationalizing denominators are a big cracker. So anyway, guys, keep up the hard work, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.